Good morning, everybody. This is Kim Danke coming to you live from the Chevalet Studios in Kennesaw, Georgia. And today is Monday, March 1st. We're at a brand new month. I love starting a brand new month. I love starting a new week. I love starting a new year. I love starting anything new. Um, so that's one of the reasons that Travis is always talking about keeping things fresh in the Shibboleth lifestyle because people enjoy the excitement of starting something new. When you hop on this morning, please say good morning, where you're watching from, and what type of Shibboleth day you are having. So just to let y'all know, I finished off the month of February with holidays. Even though I wanted to finish it off with perfect days, I finished it off with holidays. So I ended up with 10 holidays in the month of February, which is two less than I could have, but I think that's best for February since there's typically three days less than days in February. But we are currently on day 60 of our 2021 edition of the Game of Life, and I can now keep up with my dates now because Judy Clements, when she came to class on Saturday in Kennesaw, brought me this document. It says Project 365 calendar. She wrote at the bottom Game of Life, and it's got the month across the top, the day of the month, and what day that would be. I thought, oh my goodness, isn't she precious to send me that? So thank you, Judy. Thank you for thinking of me, because my calendar did say it, and then I don't have a calendar that says it this year. I didn't buy the same kind of calendar. Um, so now y'all know how it's the beginning of the month and we've got to do two things that I do. I always do my stats. And so I did my stats because those stats are important to look at, especially when you did not really finish off the month like you had hoped with perfect days and holidays. Now I'm still within the guidelines of my lifestyle or the lifestyle I'm within the guidelines. So that's a good thing, but that's why we have to coach ourselves. We have to look at our stats. We have to coach ourselves. So my beginning weight in February was 136. And after 10 holidays and such, I'm, I'm at 140. So my highest weight in the month of February basically was the 140. And then my lowest weight in the month of February was after I finished that second 21 day challenge was 133. Number of holidays, 10. Number of perfect days, 18. And intermittent fasting days, every single perfect day that I had was an intermittent fasting day. And I think intermittent fasting helps you a lot. So if you are brand new, please finish up the fast track and the daily doses for the silver level and get over in there into the gold level daily doses and learn about intermittent fasting because it is a nice little addition to what you're doing that brings great results. So as for holidays, for the month of March. I don't really have a lot going on in the month of March that would require a holiday. So what I'm thinking about doing is, this is what I did last summer. Last summer, I would have holidays on Saturday, Sunday. So if I do that, that gives me eight holidays in the month of March, and then I've got four more that if I end up wanting one some point during the week, I can do that. So that is what I did. I finished up the week. The, I wanted to finish up with perfect days. Instead, I finished up with holidays. One of the things is I have a new air fryer. And my son last week wanted some French fries. And so I made him some French fries in the rotating basket. And they were good. And I've eaten French fries every day since then. Made myself some in the rotating basket. <laughs> but I've enjoyed those French fries. I really have. And my friend Julie Marandino gave me some unicorn salt which is this special salt seasoning, and I had that dusted on them, and they made them even better. So, good morning, Charlene from Michigan. Good morning, Kay. Good morning, Michelle from Carrollton, Georgia, having an intermittent fasting day. Hello, Kimberly Yarbrough. Good morning. Good morning, Ron from Lilburn. Good morning, Michelle. I'm, I am living the Shibboleth lifestyle. It, it is true. It is true. Now, I was thinking about this morning. You know, I was disappointed in myself for giving into holidays. But the funny thing is, I'm gonna tell you something that my husband said um, a few weeks ago, early in the month of March, I mean, I mean, February. So he knew I was doing the 21 day challenge. He knew it ended on February 13th. And then I said, I'm gonna have some birthday holidays and then I'm just gonna finish out perfect. And he says, why not, why you, why not use all your holidays? Why, why would you do that? <laughs> So I thought that was the kind of interesting thing that he said. 
And then I kind of let that also play into why I used up some holidays in, in February. I did enjoy them. Um, I, what I didn't enjoy was last week when I didn't want to have a holiday and I was battling and uh, I didn't enjoy that part. So now the food, the food so much, you know, it doesn't really bother me that I've eaten food that's not approved. That doesn't bother me. What bothers me sometimes is when I don't do what I said I was going to do. That's the part that bugs me. I'm sure y'all understand that. Um, good morning, Sherry Ditto from Kennesaw Intermittent Fasting Day. Hey, Diane, going to have a perfect day. Just shared. Thank you. I wish you and Kurt a great day as well. Good morning, Michelle. Um, let's see. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Thank you, Judy. Michelle says I figured out what that was. Sometimes when you read these comments after it's been a few minutes, you're like, what are they talking about? Um, good morning, Amy from Ohio. Intermittent fasting, perfect day. Watched your fast track meeting last night with my husband, Dan, who is starting his journey to a healthy life. Way to go, Amy. And I know that he'll do great, especially with your help because you do such a great job. So thank you for bringing him on there. It wasn't the best fast track I had ever done because I could not see my screen. It was completely blurry and it was hard to read. So please forgive me for not doing as good a job as I normally do. But what I did, Amy, if y'all want to go back and watch last week's, if you go into the fast track in lap two, the Sunday night webinar will be recorded there from last week. Y'all can watch that one. I think it was a little bit better. But I know that y'all get the point of it. So... Marianne, good morning. Intermittent fasting week with Jason. Jason, oh, she's doing the EFB challenge week with Jason. Awesome. You'll have great results from that. That's fabulous. Yes, Sherry. Judy Clements is absolutely awesome. She's precious. Uh, good morning, Pamela from Alpharetta. Hey, Sandy. Good morning. Sandy Gregg came to class on Saturday. It was so good to see her. Hey, Michelle. Michelle Grimes is doing the EFB March challenge with Jason. And let's see. Diane, I have a question. What does the flame mean and what does the check mark mean? Okay, so the check mark means that it's a perfect day, but it's not an EFB day. It just means that you're having a perfect day after a holiday and your body is taking those two days to get back into efficient fat burning. The flame means efficient fat burning. So after a holiday, it takes two perfect days to get back into EFB. During those two days, you're seeing those uh, green checks, that means that your body is using up any glycogen stores out of your liver and its muscles so that it can get back into efficiently burning fat rather than easily accessible sources of energy that it needs to get rid of during the two perfect days represented by the green checks. All right, Sandy! Sandy's doing a 36-hour fast today. Way to go, Sandy. That is awesome. Uh, Polly Jones, good morning. Perfect day in Dalton. Uh, lost one pound in February. <laughs> That's good. I don't know. Is that what you wanted to do, Polly? What, what's going um, Because I'm going to say any pound loss is good. Uh, thank you, Sherry. They are a part of the program. Yep, and you're right. It's our mindset that gets in the way. You are so right, Sherry. Thank you. Uh, good morning, Beth from Villa Rica. Having a perfect day. Good morning, Becky. Um, from yesterday was a battle. Stayed perfect though. Way to go, Becky. Awesome. Awesome. Because I know, because I've battled many, many days, and I know how good it feels in the morning. So give me some hearts, Becky, if you feel so awesome this morning. And y'all all give me some hearts if you know how awesome it feels the next morning when you battled, but you didn't give in. That is, that is good. That is really good. Congrats, Becky. Hey, Candice, good morning. Starting March out on the right track. Awesome. I'm so happy to hear that, that Candice. That is wonderful. Love those hearts. Yay. Good, Amy. Awesome. Awesome. Very good. Okay, well, I've said all my good mornings. Let's get right into this devotion for today. The devotion, again, we're doing this one, Made to Crave Devotional from Lisa Turkhurst, and it's all about food issues. And I thought there was no good is the devotion name. The verse is Romans 8, 28. Gotcha, Polly. Polly, I gotcha. You can get it. You can get that. You can get that this month and another one, okay? Roseland is having the PG and J P B and J challenge today. Down another pound. Awesome. Awesome. Yay, Becky. It was so worth it, wasn't it? It was so worth it. Good for you. So Romans 8, 28. 
And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and have been called according to his purpose. If you would have told me 10 years ago that God could bring good out of my weight issues and food struggles, I would have seriously doubted you. And then when you weren't looking, I would have rolled my eyes. A soul rubbed raw from years of trying and failing does not want to hear eventually good will come from this. What I wanted was something to magically fix my issues. I wanted to be naturally thin like my sister. I wanted to feel not fat. I would have cared less about some elusive eventual good. My jeans didn't fit. Even my sweatpants didn't fit. I felt horrible. I couldn't stay committed to a healthy eating plan to save my life, and I had no evidence, and I saw no evidence of hope on the horizon. Maybe you've been there with your food issues and weight struggles. Maybe you're there right now. May I be a ray of hope to you today. Whether your issues are the same as mine or not, all of us, Jesus girls and guys, have struggles with some kind, of, of some kind. We all fall short in some manner, and we all need to know more about this good mentioned in Roman 8:28. Not long ago, I received a letter that confirmed this truth. The writer's honest confession was like heaven's salve, soothing my soul and spreading this working of good. Somehow, God took my simple words in Made to Crave, scrawled from deep places I thought were no good, and brought this good from it. And this is the letter. I just want to say thank you. I had a severe eating disorder since 1978. I became a Christian in 2002, but never could fully surrender my eating disorder to the Lord. Through your book, the Holy Spirit is empowering me as I never thought possible. I had seven days of no binging or purging. This may not seem like a high number to you, but after 33 years with this addiction, this is amazing. Praise God. May this be a glimpse of hope in the midst of whatever struggle is trying to bring you down today. It is a picture of the reality that God's word is true, always true. God does work for the good in all things, every single thing, even our most raw and seemingly impossible things. But we must know, but we must know it even when we don't feel it. Okay, so this is important for me to reread. But we must know it even when we don't feel it and let God have his way. And we know it, even if we don't feel it, that in all things, even the ones I can't fathom being used for good, God works for the good. He works for the good. Okay, it repeated itself. God works for the good. He works for the good. My job is to walk with him day by day. His job is to work for the good. And here's her prayer. Dear Lord, help me to look for the good in my situation today. I pray that as I look at my eating struggles, I will glimpse the good you are able to bring from it. I desire healing and hope for my road ahead. Please be with me in Jesus' name. So, I'm glad that something good has come out of this book and her weight struggles. And I think this book is going to be really good for all of us. It really, really is very enlightening to me. And, you know, I'm not a writer, so she puts all of these things that I know that we felt into words. And it's just so great to read it back and know that we can count on the Lord. Um, now, I'm also thankful for the Shibboleth lifestyle because it helps me stay on track and it, it's doing exactly what it was intended to do for me. I lost the weight I wanted to lose, but I'm also able to use it as a management system to manage what I'm doing. We have a brand new month starting now, so I'm under I'm under a new month of management. I assessed and did my stats for last month, and now I'm having a new month of management going on before me. So anyway, I just wanted to um, let y'all know, make sure that you... So you look at your calendar for the month because if you've got going out of town dates or birthdays, anniversaries, and other things you might want to celebrate, you need to plan for those and make sure that you have those set on your calendar for a holiday. You don't want to randomly have holidays that don't mean anything for a day that when you need one, okay? So make sure that you look at your calendar 
And if you look at stats like me, you know, have a look at your stats. It's a good time to do that because we can coach ourselves. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When I got on the scale this morning and I weighed 140, I was thrilled. I thought I was going to weigh like 145. I thought I was going to be back at where I started the year. <laughs> I thought, oh, 140, yay, yay, good. I can get back onto my perfect days and then I can get that back off. So, huh. um, but I also had not weighed since February 13th or four, uh, 14th. I hadn't weighed since February 14th at the end of the 21 day challenge. Do y'all ever just get tired of weighing sometimes? You're just like, I don't want to weigh. I don't want to do this. And like, you know, figure that out. So I didn't weigh and it was purposeful, but it was also a good learning lesson. Maybe I should weigh at least once a week um, to kind of give myself that thing to think about to help keep me on the right management track. So anyway, maybe that thought can help you today. Let's see. I know this book is awesome, Polly. Thank y'all all for being here. When you hop off, please go directly to your journal and mark your day, okay? Go ahead and declare your day. And then if you're watching on replay, please type in hashtag Shibboleth for his glory because that's what we are wanting to do. Good job, Polly. Polly, and not only are you down a pound and a half from January 1st, you are staying healthy. That is what you're doing. You're staying healthy. Awesome. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Thank you. And Monica is having an intermittent fasting day. Me too. Me too. All right. Y'all have a great day and I'll see you tomorrow morning for the Shibby Show.